Hello, my name is Hans Kunov and this is a lecture on reverse engineering. Uh, many items you find in your household, are, in fact all the items you find are man-made, engineered, and uh, we often don't take care to understand what they contain, what's in them. Uh, if you have an old uh, piece of equipment that falls apart and you want to throw it out, take it apart first and try to find out how it works. We're going to do that today with a simple hairdryer. And uh, this happens to be one you can see that has a UK plug, not a North American one. It's because I got this from my wife and uh, she didn't want to, me to play with her regular hairdryer. So I got this one. But it should work just the same. So we see a very simple uh, device, two color, two pieces of plastic, a switch, cord and so forth. And we'll take that apart and look at it a little bit in details. <clears throat> Let's start with the plug here. For some reason it has some protective plastic on it. Uh, probably doesn't mean anything. Then it has a information uh, plate here. Piece of paper, cardboard with some information and here's a, uh, a, uh, a, you'll see a um, close-up of this in a moment. It has the wiring and uh, it has three prongs like many of our plugs do. Often we don't have the third plug. The third plug, the big one here in England, is the ground. The two others are the hot and the neutral wires. Uh, I don't know which is which on uh, this thing here, but in your uh, uh, regular plugs, the, the fatter, the broader one is the neutral one, and the narrower one is the hot one. All right, let's take it apart. Let's see what it says here. It says there's a 13 amp fuse in there, so let's, let's have a look at that. So, this screw... Uh, is a self-tapping screw. It has a uh, narrow uh, sort of uh, gauge uh, turns and uh, it screws into uh, plastic. We can take this plate off and we can take this apart and here you see uh, the, the plug. It has a fuse sitting there, wires coming in here. You'll also notice there are two sort of uh, what do they call them here? They say ensure cord grip acts on outer cable. It's a cord grip, so you can see they, you can't pull the, th the cord out. Uh, also, you notice that the cord can sort of swing back and forth, but not in a sharp angle. Uh, uh, in the other end, you'll see uh, another way of preventing cord breakage. We also notice that the third leg here, the big fat one that's supposed to be the ground, is not connected. So we just have the neutral and the hot wires connected. So let's just quickly put this back together again. And uh, there we are. Put this one back in for to be orderly. And let's just test it. I uh, did bring some of these converters that you get in the airport. And it's meant for a higher voltage than, uh, than we use here, it's meant for 230 volts. But I think it'll still work. Let's try. There you are. Nice and warm, but not as warm as it would be in Europe. So, 
it works. Has two settings. Let's take this one off again. So let's take a look at, at uh, the uh, hair dryer itself. It had three settings, two, zero, and one. So it has a low, a high, and a off setting. Let's look at the, uh, uh, what's printed on here. It says Revlon, that's the manufacturer. Type S50. Reference 29129A, uh, uh, it's a model number, it says 230 volts and then a squiggle, which means uh, alternating current, 50 or 60 hertz. In North America, we use 60 hertz AC, and in Europe, it's 50 hertz. It says 1800 watts. It's a fair amount of power to put into a little item like this and we'll see how they get rid of that power in a moment. Made in PRC, so it's made in China. And then there's some symbols at the bottom. One is a double box. That means it's doubly insulated. That's why they can get away without having the uh, ground, uh, having the, the, the thing grounded. It says CE. That uh, means that it's certified in in the, Europe, in the European Union. It's a mark that tells you that uh, this can be sold. It's safe, meets certain regulations. In, in, in equipment you buy in this country, it'll say, maybe say CE as well, or it may say UL for Underwriters Laboratories. Also, it has a do not sign, and it shows a bath. So, it warns you not to take this into the bath, which probably be a bad idea because there are electrical things that are not exposed but sitting there and could be getting in touch with water, which it should not. So there's your dryer. Uh, we notice it has an air intake here and uh, uh, exit there, and we'll see what goes on inside. This is assembled with just one screw and uh, I'll show you this screw in a moment. It is a very special screw. You can see they've taken care to make sure that this item cannot easily be uh, disassembled uh, by some busy buddy hands. Uh, it has uh, a top here which fits no screwdriver. I had to go in on the side here and kind of turned around like that uh, to unscrew it. So a safety feature, obviously. The cord comes in uh, through this soft uh, uh, piece of uh, cover here. It's called uh, a strain relief. And again, it acts to prevent you from abruptly uh, uh, bending uh, the wire. If you pull on it, you see it, it uh, bends smoothly or softly. It also has something you can hang your hairdryer on a hook someplace if you like. So just one screw. So we wonder how was that put together? Why is there not a screw up here? And you'll see why. There's sort of a catch up there, so I have to use a little bit of force. There we go. So we notice that there are some catches here, uh, there, and corresponding uh, some hooks down here that uh, takes care of it. So it's a little bit hard to take apart, uh, but um, uh, that's on purpose, yet you can take it apart without breaking it. So, the cord comes in here, it's secured, the, the wire here is secured uh, with these two screws and a little uh, piece of plastic that covers it, squeezing down on the cord. The uh, two wires, there are only two coming through here, goes up to the switch that sits 
here, and then uh, some wires running off from the switch, more than two. So let's take this one off. Here's the switch, and down here is a uh, injection molded uh, little key for the switch. This is also injection molded. Let's talk a little bit about this incidentally. You can see it's a fairly complex looking item. Uh, it uh, has a lot of ridges and reinforcement and places where you can attach things or hold things rather. Uh, but it's just one piece. Except there's also a uh, a sort of uh, grid up here. Looks like it's metal grid. Uh, it's so you can't get things in there that shouldn't get in there and interfere with uh, the blower. Uh, the grid here seems to be pressed in place. There's no, there's no f uh, nothing to fix it other than whatever naturally holds it there. So I think it was probably inserted while this was molded and still hot. So it sort of naturally glues itself in place, attaches to the plastic everywhere. We can test that. Yeah, it seems to be attached to all the little uh, plastic ridges there. So uh, the switch has three positions. and uh, uh, sending uh, the electricity down, uh, a combination of wires. There are uh, three wires running off from here, four actually, a brown, a white, a black, and a blue. Uh, there's also uh, what appears to be a capacitor sitting there. Uh, I think that is to prevent uh, radio interference from the motor uh, and so forth, uh, fr from not getting back out and, and using the cord as an antenna to uh, give radio interference. It is uh, the switch and the capacitor is put on a small printed circuit board, quite simple, uh, and uh, obviously the cheaper way to assemble this switch uh, uh, and the wires. You'll notice that everything is soldered in. Solder is a combination of lead and, uh, and tin. Mostly it is these days just uh, tin, no lead because of, of health uh, reasons. And uh, solder is something that can uh, connect copper wires to copper fittings and so forth quite easily. Other forms of fitting things together would be brazing and welding, but when it comes to electrical wires, mostly solder is uh, preferred. So, from the switch we have these wires running up into the fan assembly and heating assembly here. So how is that put together? Well, let's try to see if we can get this thing out. Indeed, we can. Now we notice that in here is a conical section made of something looks like paper or cardboard. It isn't. It's mica. Mica is a mineral that uh, is very inert, electrically insulating, can withstand very high temperatures and uh, uh, is both insulating uh, and can withstand high temperatures. This protects the coils in here, which is what warms up the air, uh, from burning through uh, the, uh, the plastic here. You'll also notice that inside here there are ridges, and this member here, to, to separate or to hold this cone in place so it doesn't touch uh, the outer thing, and so there's air space between this and the shell. Because these uh, uh, wires can get very hot. Again, the shell here is injection molded, 
and uh, again very complex looking, lots of little structures in it for screw for the screw hole and for the where the plastic was pumped in in the first place, and uh, obviously made in such a way that that uh, when you make it, you can pull it out. There's an inner part here you can pull out, and this comes out. So there's sort of a shape to it that uh, allows this to be removed from the mold. The front of, of the uh, dryer has a metal shield again, uh, with small enough uh, openings that you can't get a finger through. You could get a screwdriver through, shouldn't, but you could. Um, also, we notice, it may be hard to see, that this metal shield in the front was not attached with any, anything particular, so it again was probably inserted at an early stage or during the molding process. Hard to tell, but it looks to be a fairly integral part of it, made of, of metal. Okay, so now we come to the uh, uh, heating element and the fan itself. Fan sits here. In behind is a little motor, a little electric motor sitting in here. We won't take that apart uh, today. So what do we notice? Well, we have these uh, wires running uh, around uh, this structure here. This supporting structure is again made of mica. There's a hole up here to keep it in place. Uh, and it's also held in place down below here uh, by some ridges in the, in the motor assembly here. Uh, we uh, see that there are three different kinds of, of coil, heating coil, a thicker one, a thinner one, and uh, quite a thin one with many more uh, windings. So uh, the thinner one obviously has much higher resistance than the thick one, and the combination of the three uh, gives you the uh, different settings. Now this is made of uh, uh, nichrome, uh, because nichrome is uh, an alloy that does not oxidize when it gets hot, uh, if it was made out of many other materials, they would oxidize and slowly uh, vanish. Uh, so this can stand many, many hours of heating and cooling. Now when you heat something like, like these wires, of course they expand uh, and they may bend or fall out and so forth. So what they've done here, you'll notice there's a little string sitting here. You see that a little string? attached here, it's a little string that goes over here and runs inside uh, the, uh, the coils. That's true for all the coils have this, uh, this wire running through it. It's obviously made of some material that can withstand very high temperature, I'm not sure what it is, probably glass or something like that. And uh, that keeps this from deforming and touching uh, things or touching each other, or whatever these things might do. So uh, the switch here uh, will, uh, between the three settings, select uh, a combination of coils to heat so you can get the, uh, the um, level of heat that you are looking for. We see something else here. Uh, the wires that come here, first of all, as they leave the switch, there's a little sheathing here uh, just to hold them together. That's to make it easier to assemble, I assume. Then they go in to this uh, uh, fan assembly. You'll notice as soon as they enter, if they go anywhere close to the, to the coils, there's another sheath on it of some material uh, that uh, can shield the wire from the heat because these are simple electrical wires with insulation that could melt 
and we don't want that. So uh, the wire comes in here and then is connected with a rivet to the next wire and to other components. Why rivets? Well, because you can't solder in here. You could, but it'll melt uh, when the heat is on. So you have to have another means of attaching wires to uh, inside the hot assembly here. So these are little rivets, and you'll see a number of them in, in, uh, in this uh, assembly. Uh, and you'll see some other circuit elements in here. Uh, you'll see this little fellow here, and I'll show you a close-up of it in a moment. It is, uh, uh, it, it is a bimetallic circuit uh, thermal switch. So, so long as the temperature of this thermal switch is below a certain uh, amount, uh, so long as it's in the safe zone, the switch is closed and the circuit is closed and everything works as it should. If for some reason the assembly heats up, it could be because uh, hair assembles here or some dirt or something assembles here, so it effectively blocks the airflow, then this thing would heat up too much and uh, could cause problems. Uh, so the thermal switch will simply cut off, cut off the, uh, the current until it cools down again enough then it'll close again and it'll work again. But if you, if your hairdryer actually shuts off because of heat, you better look at it and clean it before you start it again. So that's a thermal switch. We saw in, in the plug here there's another switch that was a current switch so that if there's a short in here uh, and the current gets too high, it'll blow the fuse. So uh, uh, this is just the thermal switch is second protection. We see also a little bead here uh, of some ferromagnetic material, I believe, and the current uh, from the wires run through there. Again, I believe that is uh, to prevent uh, radio frequency interference. It'll cut out some high-frequency uh, interference. Finally, we see some diodes. There are actually four of them sitting here. One, two, three, four diodes. Uh, and uh, you may wonder why we need diodes uh, in there. Well, that's because uh, DC motors, and this is a DC motor, uh, is a lot cheaper uh, than an AC motor. And so the manufacturer has decided that he wants to supply DC current uh, to the motor instead of AC current. And to do this, he uses uh, a bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifiers look like this. So here's your power supply, here's your motor, and here are four diodes sitting in an arrangement like this. So when there's a, a, when this side is positive, then the current goes in this way, through here, down here, and out this way. When this is positive, then the current goes in this way, and this way, this way, and out this way. So in both cases, the current will go through the motor this way. So that's, uh, that uh, allows you for a simple way to convert uh, uh, the AC to well, a choppy DC, but at least a current that goes in just one direction. The uh, fan is made of clear plastic and attached to the motor. And uh, there you have it. There's your uh, hairdryer, fairly simple device, uh, and uh, one that's interesting to uh, take apart, I hope you think. Thank you.